indigenous to the United States, enhancing them. That's what gain of function is about. And then carelessly mishandling it. Yes, over the weekend, we had yet another report of this happening by the U.S. military. Before we go to that, I just want to let you know, however, that uh, Deep Cleanse is back in stock. It's one of the products that we sell at InfoWarsLife.com. That's what supports our operation. Deep Cleanse by InfoWars Life is back in stock after selling out just months ago in only a couple of days. Our newest run is still in limited supply. It's extremely hard to get the organic ingredients that make up Deep Cleanse. It uses nanocolloidal zeolites and organic compounds to aid the body in true cleansing. It's one of the best all-in-one products by InfoWars Life to help your body cleanse itself naturally. We have a lot of reviews on our site. That's one of the ways that you can make uh, an informed decision uh, if you want to support us and support your health. Let me read you a couple of reviews about Deep Cleanse that are on uh, InfoWarsLife.com. Here's one by Monty. Uh, he doesn't. He prefers not to say where he's from. He said, "I previously conducted an oxy powder cleanse, an apple cider and vinegar, olive oil liver cleanse, and had already been using a different zeolite metal cleanse. I then tried this product. The zeolite is a must for me because of other circumstances. After starting this product, stuff started coming out of me. I feel even better than I did before. Another one. Uh, this is from a homemaker. She says uh, in uh, Chichester, New Hampshire." I followed, up, I followed up with my grandkid's doctor on their heavy metal panel, and he was astonished with the decreased readings. That's what the zeolites do for you. It's essentially uh, something that helps to filter, naturally filter uh, the heavy metals and toxins out of your body. Again, it's back in stock. At InfoWarsLife.com, that's Deep Cleanse at InfoWarsLife.com. Let's talk about other things that might get into your body. Things from the Department of Defense. You know, last night, my family went back and watched uh, Aliens again. We hadn't seen it for a number of years. And every time I see it, I'm, I'm just amazed at the parallels between this one character, if you remember, who wants to get the, uh, the alien back because he can make a lot of money selling it to the military, weaponizing it, right? I'm amazed at how irresponsible our real government is. We have a government, we have military contractors who will do precisely that in the real world. They're bringing in pathogens that are not indigenous to America. They are enhancing them. They call them select agents. They're enhancing them so that they are more deadly. These are things that already have uh, kill uh, the vast majority of the people who contract it. They try to make it more dangerous. They try to make it more contagious. And then they're sloppy with the way that they contain it. They bring them over in these biosafety labs. We, we've talked about this earlier this year. We talked about the leak in uh, LSU, the National Primate Center, where they brought over Burkholderia pseudomalii, which is a, a bacteria that's not indigenous to the United States. Somehow it got out of their biosafety level three lab and got into the wild, into the open acreage with these other uh, primates that were there. They had an investigation. They couldn't figure it out. Then one of the uh, people who was investigating it tested positive for it. But don't worry. I'm sure they didn't catch it, they said. Didn't catch it here. They must have gotten it from a previous exposure. And then the head of the, uh, the Tulane area said, um, this Tulane lab said, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we test the soil and, and find the bacteria there because it was probably already there. And somebody who was honest at the CDC said that has never been in the United States. It only was existent in uh, two other countries far remote from here. He said that's never been indigenous in the United States. But, of course, that's what we're seeing over and over again. Now the newest one. Newest one. We had anthrax shipped through the mail. Live anthrax shipped by Department of Defense Laboratories. Now we've got samples of black plague and other deadly pathogens. The latest CDC investigation started after CDC inspectors found a sample of the plague in a freezer outside of a containment area on August the 17th at the Edgewood Chemical Biological Center in Maryland. Now they say this is the chairman of the House Energy Commerce Committee. Uh, both of them, the Republican and Democrat, said uh, anthrax being mishandled is disconcerting enough, but now We've got mishandling that includes the plague. No, it doesn't include the plague. It includes weaponized plague. You understand? Why are we even doing this? Why would we even take deadly pathogens and weaponize them? And then why would we give it to these people to let loose? We'll be right back.
One of the articles that's up on Infowars.com are the topless protesters who are interrupting the Muslim conference on women. You know, uh, we have the the uh, news break that uh, Darren McBreen did where he's talking about how many skirts and uh, shorts uh, they warned people back in June in Germany. They warned young girls not to wear mini skirts, not to wear shorts because they might get attacked. Well, what do you think would happen if you go to a conference uh, with fundamental Islamicists and you rip off your burqa and your bra and get topless up there? Well, what happened? And interestingly enough, what these two fundamentalist preachers were talking about at the time, whether or not wives should be beaten. OK, whether they should be beaten or not. So these two women who had gone to the conference, they rip off their burqas, they're topless and they jump up on stage and they start yelling. No one subjugates me. The other one said, uh, I'm my own prophet. They had stuff written on their uh, on their bodies. At that point, you can see here this guy is kicking them. They a mass of men rush on the stage and there's no debate as to whether or not they should beat topless women or kick topless women. Not with the crowd of people that are there. There you go. That's the religion of peace there. Uh, taking those two women, knocking them down, and uh, beating and kicking them. Now we have an article from the American Thinker. Tennessee Common Core teaches one nation under Allah. National Common Core. You know, that's the thing. Remember when Jeb Bush was criticized for uh, being part of an organization that funded Planned Parenthood? And his defense was, well, I was doing that with uh, Bill Gates, and, and we were actually trying to push Common Core. Uh, not Planned Parenthood, we're actually trying to push Common Core. And uh, even though we gave them $10 million, I actually reduced uh, funding from the state of Florida for Planned Parenthood. You know how much you reduced it? $300,000 reduction in funding to Planned Parenthood, while the foundation that he's a director of, Jeb Bush, gives them $10 million. Okay? So he, redu he gives them 30 times more money privately than he took away publicly. But what he was really trying to push was Common Core. Well, what does Common Core do for us? Well, we've had a lot of guests on to talk about the problems with Common Core. One of the problems with Common Core is the fact that it's common. The fact that we have the federal government dictating to everybody what education should be, what should be taught. Defining the education, defining the tests, and telling everybody what should be taught. And of course, it is a horrible curriculum deliberately dumbing down the population. Of course, Charlotte Isserby, who we've talked to many times with uh, Phyllis Schlafly, had written a book, The Deliberate Dumbing Down of America. Uh, Phil, uh, Charlotte Isserby did it from her uh, time at the Department of Education in the Reagan administration. She knew that this was a process that was deliberately trying to dumb down the American population. The reason that Johnny can't read isn't because of incompetence, it's because of design. It is a tool of social control. It is not a, an instrument of education. That's the way the Department of Education has been pushing things all along. And of course, we see the fruit of this now in Tennessee. In this particular district, uh, this is the Mari County School District, students were assigned a Five Pillars of Islam project that included the translation of the Pillar of Shahada, as being there is no God but Allah. Muhammad is a prophet. Joy Ellis, the mother of a seventh grader at Spring Hill Middle School in Tennessee, said that Christian children should not be instructed to write this out. She said, this is a seventh grade state standard and will be on TCAP. She said, I didn't have a problem with the history of Islam being taught, but to go so far as to make my child write the Shahada is unacceptable. Where's the ACLU on this? Isn't this far more than what we've been seeing done with Christianity? Well, of course, they're not having a problem with this. You should have a problem with this. You should have a problem with the Department of Education. Remember, Ronald Reagan was going to get rid of the Department of Education. He could have killed that thing while it was in the cradle, like Rosemary's Baby, but he didn't. Jimmy Carter had created it. It was less than four years old when Ronald Reagan took office. He ran, and one of the tenets that he was running on was he was going to get rid of the Department of Education. When he left, it was several times larger than when he took office. And see, that's the problem. That's the problem with the presidential elections, or as I call them, celebrity big brother. Every four years, we get to pick a new big brother now. And it's gotten to be more and more a celebrity operation.
And how do we know that even if these guys put out a position paper, how do we know that it isn't just a position? It's not a principle that they are going to live by. This is just a position that they're putting out so they can get the position of president. How do we know that these people are going to stick to any of this stuff? Of course, we don't know. And we see over and over again that they don't do what they said they were going to do when they get elected. How many times are we going to get fooled by this? And nevertheless, we still see that we're moving to that yet again. One of the ways that we move against this, of course, is with media. And one of the things that we're trying to do with our money bomb that's going to start in two days, it will be a 27-hour money bomb. At the very least, it may go longer than that, I guess, if we, if we count uh, overdrive and the news wrap-up, which is the fourth hour. We have a goal of reaching 400 million people in North America. To do that, we need a million dollars. We need your help to do that. How are we going to do it? We're going to try to do this by satellite broadcasting that can be picked up by local television stations to help give us more exposure. We're depending on you to help us with crowdfunded donations. Typically, the way we support our operation, and we run a very tight ship here at InfoWars, we typically support it by the products that we sell at InfoWarsLife.com. But to expand like this, we need your help in a crowdfunding operation. So we're going to have a telethon. I think it'll be very entertaining. I think it'll be very informative. The uh, next issue of Celebrity Big Brother on CNN, the presidential so-called debates, will be happening that evening. We'll be covering that live and uh, reacting to what is being said, uh, kind of like a Mystery Science 3000. <laughs> so, uh, we won't have any robots. It'll just be us here. Uh, we'll be talking about it. But we've never taken a loan from anybody. We expand our operation with your support. So we hope that you will uh, stay tuned for the money bomb and be aware of it and uh, tell your friends about it. We'll have a lot of auctions that will be involved in that as well. Some interesting things that are going to be auctioned off. And when I look at that, one of the things that made me think about that was this um, article. Uh, there's a new documentary film that is called Truth, and it's about Dan Rather. Uh, it's a documentary. Remember, uh, Dan Rather was essentially fired or left or whatever it was uh, because of some documents where uh, he came after George Bush in 2006, events leading up to the election. He says, a film called Truth should be accurate. Well, I would think so, too. But, of course, we've also had other films with truth in the title, like Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth, which was really nothing but a convenient lie uh, about global warming. So I'm not <laughs> – this is a uh, uh, Robert Redford uh, starring Rathergate movie called Truth. I guess Robert Redford plays Dan Rather. Uh, they say He says, journalism is not an exact science. But you know what is an exact science? You can take a look at a document that's produced, like the so-called letter uh, that they had there. And you can say, well, this letter purports to have been written by some guy with the National Guard uh, back in the 1960s on his typewriter. But look, the type is proportionally spaced. And when you type a date like the 13th, that TH is in tiny superscript. That might be an indication that it was done with a modern word processor. It looked exactly like something that was put out by Microsoft's word processors at the time. It did not look anything at all like something that had come out of a 1960 typewriter. So, yeah, journalism is not an exact science, but there are exact sciences that you can use to verify your facts. But, of course, now they're trying to take Dan Rather's conspiracy theory. And here's the deal. I'm not defending George Bush's draft dodging uh, issues. There's other ways that they could have taken him down. They could have come after him for the lies about Iraq. They could have come after him for subverting the Constitution with the Patriot Act and essentially enacting martial law because that's what we're under. Let's understand that. We've been under martial law without any doubt about it since uh, the Patriot Act. When they say that they're not interested in the Constitution, remember I said that earlier we had the guy on PBS Frontline Documentary who was the uh, the legal counsel for the NSA. He said, Thomas Drake came to me and said something about the Constitution. If he said that, I would immediately just ignore him. Could care less about the Constitution. So we're under martial law. So if you're going to come after Bush, if you're going to try to take down a liar and a dictator, don't do it by telling a bunch of lies. Tell the truth. There was plenty of truth that they could have used to take down George W. Bush. But instead... They fabricate something off to the side. And you ask yourself, why would they do that? 
Why would they do that? 